would like you to close your eyes and imagine yourself in your car. Really imagine it. The feel of the steering wheel in your hand. Perhaps your favorite tunes are jamming on the radio. Now, why are you in your car? Well, maybe you're on your way to work or school. If you have kids, they may be in the car with you. Or perhaps you're carpooling with a colleague. And now that we're imagining ourselves in our cars, let's imagine that we are in gridlock traffic. <laughs> Think of the frustration you feel as you stare endlessly at the taillights in front of you. That same pedestrian passes by the window every minute. You know you're barely your kids start to whine because they want to watch a new movie. Or if you have small kids, they want to go to the bathroom. You spend hours stuck in traffic. So exactly how much time do you spend in your car? Is it 30 minutes every day? Is it an hour? Is it two hours? Well, if you commute for one hour every day, Expect to spend about 260 hours in your car every year. That's 33 work days. That's more time than you're going to spend on holidays. The average person actually spends about 276 hours in their car every year. And if you've driven over your entire career, that's several years of your life wasted in traffic. Does it have to be this way? We want to save you time by changing how you commute in congested urban areas. By changing how you commute in the face of never-ending traffic. We're not talking about driving more courteously, more efficiently, or faster. We're not even talking about carpooling. We want you to fly. Now, instead of battling traffic, let's imagine we hail an air taxi. It picks you up and takes you where you want to go. No traffic, no delays. You just get there five times faster by flying over traffic. Let's imagine this air taxi. It's an aircraft that takes off and lands like a helicopter and flies fast like an airplane. It's no wonder that ride hailing is so effective in cities. You simply take out your phone and away you go. Imagine doing that with an aircraft. That's a pretty powerful thought. So now, let's talk about how we can save you time by traveling in congested urban areas. What does this aircraft look like? Well, not only does it have to be sustainable, so we want an electric aircraft powered only by batteries, it has to fly quickly and quietly. And it's got to be safe, just as safe as the airlines. It's got to be on demand, and it's got to be competitively priced similar to an Uber, or to a Lyft, or to a taxi cab, if you're still into that sort of thing. And now that we're feeling creative about our new electric aircraft that takes off and lands like a helicopter and flies fast like an airplane, why don't we go ahead and make it super cool and red? <laughs> Imagine what you could accomplish with years of your life not wasted in traffic. That is your time. So let's back up for a second. Let's explore some more of the reasons how this could change everything. By a show of hands, how many of you drive a car? 
Have you ever thought how much your car costs you to own and operate on a yearly basis? There's the insurance, the maintenance, the gasoline, the car payment. It's not trivial. The average car payment is $489 a month. If you live in a major city, expect to pay $2,600 or more every year on parking. Last year, I spent over $1,800 on gasoline, and I drove less than 14,000 miles. When all is said and done, your average car will cost you $11,550 every year to drive. And if you're that 276 hour a year commuter, that's $42 an hour to drive your own car. It's no wonder right here it works. So how is it that we're going to change the way we commute in urban areas? Did you know if you're stuck in traffic for one hour, a half gallon of gasoline goes up into the atmosphere? An economist calls that a waste of money. An environmentalist thinks about how the carbon dioxide contributes to the greenhouse effect. A business person thinks about the cost of goods delivery. Their delivery trucks are stuck in the traffic too. That wasted time and money gets passed on to you, the consumer. Whatever your perspective, know that traffic impacts us all and is a drain in our society. It robs you of your time It pollutes your plant, and it makes the products you buy more expensive. Moreover, if you want to live in a city, expect to pay more for housing, because traffic creates an artificially high demand. So how do we change this? Well, what are we currently doing? Ride hailing has made significant improvements to transportation and transportation access, especially for the poor. It's taken the prohibitive cost of vehicle ownership and changed it into a pay-as-you-go business model. And while those gains are significant, it has not addressed wasted time, traffic congestion, or exhaust pollution. So why is it that we drive on the ground instead of flying through the third dimension? Well, if we are flying cities, vertical takeoff and landing aircraft are key. And if we are to tackle exhaust pollution, then electrically powered aircraft are also key. Together, these two concepts are known as electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, or eVTOL aircraft for short. And what I'd like to do is explore some of the technical challenges of eVTOL aircraft with you. While electrically powered motors are significantly more powerful than their gasoline counterparts, it's the battery technology that is the limiting factor. The batteries of today have very limited energy density, especially when compared to gasoline. Pound for pound, gasoline contains 20 times more energy than the equivalent weight battery. So what does this mean in the context of EV tall aircraft? Well, the batteries are heavy. They have low levels of energy storage, so you need a lot of them. Consequently, you need bigger, more powerful electric motors to lift the extra battery weight. And then you need more batteries to drive the bigger, more powerful electric motors. It's a vicious cycle. It's the single biggest reason why these aircraft have not been widely developed yet. However, progress is being made. So to better understand the role batteries will play in eVTOL aircraft development, one needs to talk about the power consumption requirements 
during the different stages of flight. So for the Venturi eVTOL design, there are two basic stages. There's hovering flight and forward flight. Now hovering any aircraft consumes a lot of power. In order to hover an eVTOL aircraft, you need to suck the entire weight of the aircraft in air down through its propellers once every second. On the other hand, a conventionally winged aircraft just needs airspeed moving over the wing to generate wing-borne lift. That's why it accelerates down the runway prior to takeoff. So from the power consumption perspective, wing-borne lift is practically free when compared to hovering. So how are we tackling these challenges? I mean, they're real technical problems. Well, we're doing two things. The Venturi eVTOL design is developing a wing that generates lift in a hover, and then we're quickly transitioning to wingborne flight after takeoff. So how do you develop lift in a hover? You can see we have these two channels in our wing. We accelerate air down through those U-shaped channels. They're actually just semicircular wings. So they generate lift when you push air over them. As a matter of fact, not only do they generate lift in a hover, but they also generate lift in forward flight. And then once airborne, we transition the aircraft to wingborne lift by tilting the wings forward and flying like a regular airplane. So let's imagine again. Let's imagine these technologies are here. Or better yet, let's imagine these aircraft are ubiquitous. They are everywhere. What would you do with that extra transportation time? Would you do new things? I think some of you may. I think the majority of you won't. I think if you devote an hour to commuting today, you'll devote an hour to commuting in the future, whether that's car or EV talk. So how will that change the landscape in cities? Where will you choose to live if you could travel 160 miles easily in one hour? Would you still drive a car? Well, many New Yorkers today live and they don't have a car. They use ride hailing, the subway, or they walk. Mind you, they don't travel very far. And in that city and many others, traffic congestion is still a daily disaster. Additionally, cars and trains require roads and tracks. And that's a significant limitation. And it costs us money. Aircraft have the flexibility of flying in any direction. So I'd like to pull that thread with you for a little bit. Imagine you draw a 20-mile radius circle around the city of your choice. And that represents one hour of car travel. Now around the same city, you draw a 100-mile circle. And that represents one hour EV tall flight. Yes, the 100-mile radius is five times bigger than the 20-mile radius. However, the enclosed area is 25 times bigger. That's 25 times more real estate. You could fit 25 times more people in there. So how would that change things in cities? Well, they wouldn't have to be so densely packed. Perhaps miles of concrete roads constructed to support the crushing levels of traffic could be partially repurposed as green spaces and trails. Maybe parking structures could re be replaced with buildings that had more meaningful uses. Maybe the price of housing would normalize in cities as people decided to move out with it because travel options were better. So, as an emerging technology, I view the journey of EV tall aircraft as remarkably similar to the cell phone, sorry, the smartphone. So prior to the smartphone, we had computers, 
digital cameras, GPS devices, the internet. The real revolution is packaging that up into a single product and giving it to people. Today we have planes and helicopters and drones and batteries, and electric motors and artificial intelligence. EVTOL prototypes are flying now. Nobody predicted how the smartphone would change the world, but it did and did so profoundly. Computer sales dropped, but people's connectivity exploded. Will the same happen for cars? I don't know, and only time will tell. What I do know is that people always want to move and connect, and EVTOL aircraft support that desire for them. So now, imagine a world with fewer roads, with highways of green space connecting cities and towns. Imagine a world without the death and destruction of car accidents. Imagine a world without speeding tickets. What will you do with your extra commuting time? Will you spend it with your family? Will you learn a new language and try and connect? Will you take up playing a musical instrument? Will you sit around and think about the next big discovery? EVTOL travel is all about the gift of time. Your time. Time not wasted in traffic. Imagine a life with more time. Thank you very much.